Hey guys, welcome back to the YouTube channel Programming Knowledge. In today's Microsoft Excel tutorials video, we are going to continue with our topic of macros. In the previous video where we talked about how can we create macros from scratch, uh, we learned that how can we record macros and uh, then how can we delete them, how can we create shortcuts of macros, how can we use the shortcuts, how can we rerun the macros and apart from that we learned that how can we create fixed macros that is uh, whenever a macro is created on a particular column in the cell then only at that column in the next sheet that macro would be reproduced but uh, that's not always the situation there is sometimes a situation where you want to uh, just repeat the steps that you have recorded in a macro multiple times in the same worksheet but with what we have seen up till now what can we do is just create the macros or duplicate the macros at the same place so it would not be able to duplicate itself in the same sheet multiple times cause uh, the column uh, number or the cell number is fixed in those kinds of macros and that cell number is unique which is present only once in one sheet so that is why only uh, the macros that we have studied up till now that is the static macros can only be created once or they could only be run once in a particular sheet now we are going to see that how can we create macros with the help of relative referencing and with the help of relative referencing then we can run the macros multiple time in a similar worksheet in a same worksheet and in as many worksheets as we want so first of all we are going to see that how can we create macros using relative referencing relative referencing we already know what it is it uh, is used to record uh, in the case of macros i can just explain it simply as it is used to record the position of the cell like uh, the macro we had already created over here what is it gonna record is uh, you got a click on any one cell and provide it with the serial number data then you got to move to the next cell that is the offset value it is what it is going to record in itself while the macro we had created uh, before it records the actual position of the cell like i4 and j4 and so on so uh, that is the difference between the relative referencing of the macros and a static macro so let's see that how can we create a relative referencing macro but before that what you got to do is just customize your ribbon that is present over here this is called a ribbon you just go to customize it somewhat and uh, provide it with some new tabs so how can we do that you can just go to this file option here you will find options so when you just click on it this kind of a dialog box opens in front of you then you can uh, just go to this left hand side where there is an option of customize ribbon you can just click on this option and you can see that these are some of the main tabs that are present over here and in this there is an option called developer when you just expand it you can see that uh, there is an option called code and when you expand this code option you can see that these are some things that are present like visual basic editor macros record macro use relative references and macro security so these are the options that we want to add in our ribbon so for that what we are going to do is just check on this developer tab and click on ok now as soon as you do that you can see that after the view tab we have a new tab in front of us that is known as the developer tab so this developer tab helps us to work with the macros in a more clear way so what you got to do is just click on this developer tab and you can see in the code group these are these different options of the macro that are present like you can record the macro from here only you can do everything that was possible over there now over here using this developer tab now what we have used this developer tab is cause of this option use relative references um, now the advantage of this option is i have already told it and uh, since this option is present only in the developer tab that is why we have used or added this developer tab into our macros now uh, what i'm going to do is just record the macro but before that uh, just turn on this option of use relative references then you can just start recording a macro um, as soon uh, as we have already got this dialog box then you can simply give it a name like macro one provided with a shortcut control shift q like this one this workbook i'm going to keep it the same 
and description is I'm going to type relative then click on ok and now I'm going to start recording my macro now this time what I'm going to do is just provide it with the days of the week so just I'm going to type in days and here I'm going to type in months now in the days I'm going to type it MON for Monday and then I'm going to just expand it up to Sunday and for the month I'm going to type in J A N Jan and then I'm going to expand it till July then I'm going to just uh, provide it with a border so for that go to the home tabs and provide it with all borders like this and align it to the center like this so this is what I have recorded in my macro and then you can just stop the recording so now we have recorded another macro using the relative references now if you want you can just go to the developer tab once again and you can see that this macro one is already recorded uh, with a description as relative now what you got to do is uh, when you run it then whenever uh, where or wherever your cell is wherever your active cell is then over at that cell this macro would run here you can see that uh, my active cell is N13 so if I just click on run just now then this macro would um, do its actions on cell N13 so I just click on run and you can see that it has performed its action over here now you might have noticed that it has performed its actions on the cell Q13 instead of N13 and the reason uh, behind this is when I started recording I just clicked on some cell and then I moved uh, two columns and then uh, at the cell number M4 I started my recording so that is why its action has already been recorded over there and that's the action it has performed but now you can just go to any, any other cell and you can just uh, run the macro now we had already provided a, a shortcut for it so uh, we can use that shortcut as well now one more thing that you might want to understand about this macro is once you have created the macro you can also edit it as per your choice so how can you edit the macros you can just uh, open this macros dialog box you can select any macro that you want to edit then there is an option of edit as soon as you click that you can see that this kind of a window opens in front of you now what is this window this is actually a visual basic for applications editor window where all these macros are stored uh, here you can see that the macro uh, we had created is stored over here the month macro I have opened and it has stored over here so uh, you can see that uh, the month macro is its name then this is its description months name and s number that we had provided and then here its shortcut is written that is control plus shift plus t so these are all in the comment staff which means that uh, they have no usage that is they are only for reading purposes and this is actually the visual basic code that is used behind the screens and this records all the actions that we did with our macros now here you can see this is the macro one uh, the second macro with its description as relative and its keyboard shortcut as control shift Q now uh, all these steps that I had performed in this relative macro are stored over here and um, this is what uh, the macro looks like now if you know how to edit a visual basic code then you can simply edit your macros over here you can uh, do anything that you want with your macros over here like uh, in my second macro that was my relative macro what I had done was first of all uh, there was an offset of three cells which I had done that is why uh, instead of the cell N13 the macro started its work at the cell Q13 so uh, what I'm going to do is just delete this line over here this uh, line of code has now been deleted and now what will it do is whatever my active cell was it would begin its execution over there only and will not offset itself now what I'm going to do is once I have cleared it then there is this um, run option in uh, visual basic 
for applications then you can use that or provide it with a shortcut key as f5 so i'm just going to click on this run option then you can just close this window so you can see that this macro over here is run and the reason why it has run over here was because our active cell was present over there you can just understand it very simply like now we have active cell as f13 so if we provide it with a shortcut key control shift q then you can see that this macro has run only in the cell f13 because we had just deleted that offset line and now our um, macro is running from the cell which was already highlighted so that's how you can just edit those macros now uh, that is the usage of the relative macros now you have seen that uh, we can use the relative macros in only those worksheet uh, in which we had created but it can be uh, just run in any other worksheet you can just select a cell run it with the help of the shortcut keys and you can run it any times as you want as much times as you want you can see like this so that is all about the relative macros we have learned that how can we create relative macros how can we run them and apart from that we have already learned that how can we edit these macros so that is all in today's video thanks for watching goodbye